sort of mocked in. So it's my intention to get this sealed up down here to stop it all oozing out. Beautiful dinner at the top. Um, obviously here there's no low spots anymore, it's all nice and built up. Just clamped down, beautiful up. And underneath you got a three quarter ply sandwich and then with a stainless steel plate as a, as a rather large washer in there. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to uh, Sailing Foxy Lady. This is my full restoration of a 1973 30-foot Arista Uh, please like and subscribe if you would like to follow our progress. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, just got down here, popped the cover up. I've released the boat from the uh, from the front cleat there. Um, just readjusted the lines. So my plan now is to get a wire brush on there, remove the remnants of what's there, get the cleat off, um, drill it, and then when I do my thing that I'm going to do here and mix up the thickened epoxy. I'll fill the holes up there with thickened epoxy, do my bits here that I've got to do, um, and then sort of come tomorrow I can drill it, refit the cleat, re tie up properly. Um, I'm not going to film me attacking that for the pure reason it's going to be an absolute pain. So uh, I'll do it and I'll show you the, the results as I go to so I can turn myself into a bit of a contortionist to get it done um, and I'm going to look at what well, hoover this scraps out from here what I'm going to do is look at getting the uh, this part of the bulkhead um, just stick an epoxy podged in there and a bit of wood that's going to support it uh, get it all measured up get it marked out and get it all fixed into place I'd like to get the filleting done so I can fill the foam tomorrow uh, but realistically it's probably not gonna happen today but we'll see we shall see okay just came out in reasonably good shape um what i've done these these scraps down here in the back end so there's as it's purely luck holding it together. In the back here, what I've done is on top. I've buzzed about 10 mil on top, left the original holes um, at the bottom here, the original size. So I'll clean this up with a wire brush, put some black tape on there when I, when I get to it, and uh, stuff them holes with epoxy. But I'll wait until I mix up some epoxy later and I'll come through the rest of it. But uh, yeah, it's not too bad up there. Needed doing, there's nothing else for that backing plate. But um, I'm sort of crack on with this now. Okay, this is the, uh, the frame I'm sort of mocked in. So it's my intention to get this sealed up down here to stop it all oozing out. Um, so I'm, go I'm going to epoxy in the bulkhead because what I'm going to do is I'll use the biaxial with epoxy on this bulkhead, obviously once I've, once I've get that far. So I can use thick epoxy just to stop the foam oozing out through there. So I'll do uh, some uh, thick epoxy um, fillets on there. This top piece, I'm going to use polyester purely because of the size of it and obviously the cost of polyester with CSM. And I'll just uh, two or three layers straight over the top once this top one's in to create that almost um, a polyester bucket. And then because it's a little bit like there's a hole here that was used for, as a drain before, um, the way I've done this now, and I've lent, I've lent the wood. A little bit that way and once it's all glassed in and done I'll re re drill another hole as a drain hole and it'll just disappear out through the hole if it if it requires it 
but that's uh, mocked in now. I say so I'm going to epoxy in this and then I'll do polyester fillets on the top piece there. Um, I'm going to, it's 10 to 7 now, I need to go home at a decent time for dinner and stuff but I'm going to epoxy this in and I'm, I'm going to try and do the polyester fillet in um, but we'll see how I get on for time. But it's not looking too bad, once that's in, so I want to concentrate on getting this in, getting the foam in and then I'll make up the, uh, the template for the for the second half. So that's why I've left this little bit here. So that, that'll, when it's on, it'll be flush. That'll be screwed onto there. Um, and then the top half of the bulkhead will screw into there and this top piece here. So that'll be fixed in nicely. And obviously it'll also be um, Thick an epoxy fillet and then epoxy tabbed in with biaxial. But I'm just going to do the pre work now. Um, I still need to clean up up there, give it a little rusty patch, get some black tape up there. I'm going to, I'm going to mix up the thick and epoxy, podge this in, put this together, and then say I'll see how I'll get on with all the thick and epoxy tonight. But she's getting there. Hey guys, she's in. Is it the prettiest job on earth? Nope. But will it be effective? I don't think so. I've got it so it's leaning that way and back. So any moisture in this locker will go to its newly drilled hole when I drill it. So I feel the old one with epoxy. Um, and when, I've, when it's all done and tabbed out, I'll, um, I'll drill a hole. I was thinking I'll fill it with epoxy and re-drill it, but there's no need for that. I literally just, just buzz a hole through because there's no core here, it's just material. Um, yeah, so that's filleted in with epoxy. Um, quite a tidy job, quite quite even, quite nice. So when I come to the epoxy in the biaxial, I should get a, a nice finish on there. Um, the polyester fill it in is not so pretty um, but ultimately this whole thing up top here is going to get covered in a few layers of CSM and obliterated with flow coat um, whole sort of locker obliterated with flow coat so it will we'll just be one big nice smooth white locker ready to receive locker um, anchors fenders and all that good stuff but that's uh she's sealed up now so the only way into that expanse inside there is through them two holes and tomorrow i'll come down i've got um my wife's got a covid jab in the morning really good ports we'll get that done do a bit of sharpen um and i'll come down and i'll start messing around with my uh my two-part pu foam i've watched um also, you see on our previous videos, I've, I've messed around with this, this stuff before. Some CFS, really good stuff. I've done a little bit of experimenting, a bit of warmth, and um, I watch. I do things backwards, so I watch the CFS video they've got on YouTube on mixing this stuff, and it says for best best results, part A, whisk it up to get some air bubbles in it, and that makes it a lot more. Um, effective at expanding so that's what I'm doing tomorrow whisking up A getting the air bubbles in it adding B good stir it says like it's got to be like a good stir last time I probably rushed it a bit too much so I'll do a good stir get it poured in there I'll have some my um, heater whatever it is blowing on there to get the area nice and warm when I'm doing it and hopefully I reckon the sort of three kilos or so I've got left there, I oh, can do it. But uh, yeah, we'll have a look tomorrow. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Hi, guys. Just got back down. Just got back from getting a wife having a COVID jab and stuff. Um, Apologise for the darkness. Uh, I haven't opened the hatch up top yet. But in there, it's all gone off nicely. So just a 
obviously this front the front here the actual bulkhead is epoxied and the top there it's just got thick and polyester resin um, fillets just to help me when I come through the laying so next in here is to mix up the two part bung it in there and fill that void but before that um, so well, yesterday I took off the cleat and the backing plate was non-existent um, so I drilled it out thickened epoxy into the, the core so oversized drill thickened epoxy so in a little while I drilled that out I took the um, the cleat home gave it a bit of a clean up bit of a polish um, what I'm going to do is best of both worlds I believe so this will be obviously on the deck the thick and epoxy bolt through thick and epoxy this will be underneath with so instead of having washers and everything i'm going to put the steel plate like so so that'll be uber strong it's still got that little tiny bit of i'm guessing that's where the ply goes in to get that tiny bit of movement if required i don't know why you do it but that's what people do, so I'm doing it. And rather than having penny washers, whatever, I'm going to put this stainless plate on there um, to spread the load. And it'll be on there forever and ever and ever. So I've just cut the, the plate on the angle grinder. So all I'm going to do now is, with me Sharpie, is just mark the centres. I'll get my drill drill it out so it's got clearance just enough for the for the bolts to go through um i'll chop the wood for the sandwich underneath and i'll uh then i'll buzz out the deck and get this fitted but i should tune in when i make some progress cheers hey guys all right let's take a ride on my uh my head cam that's the hatch up you see under there hopefully you can see my uh angle my head's on and then you've got the three quarter marine ply and the steel plate on the bottom and the bolts and on top I've put the um oh, what's the bloody thing called butyl tape so I've put the butyl tape around uh, the base of the cleat I'm going to go and tighten it up now So that's the cleat we attached. Obviously not clamped down yet, but where the low spots were, it's been epoxied in. I sanded it down just by hand to get a level. So I'll now clamp this down. Um, once it's clamped down, trim off the excess butyl all that spews out the side. And uh, job's a good one. But I'm not gonna film me clamping it down, but uh, you get the general gist. Cheers. Hey guys, so I know I've got quite a few subscribers and viewers that are sort of experienced sort of boat hands. So, I mean, would you say that's good? So she's beautiful in at the top. Um, obviously here there's no low spots anymore, it's all nice and built up. She's clamped down, beautiful up. And underneath you got a three quarter ply sandwich and then with a stainless steel plate, there's a, there's a rather large washer pushing up on it um, eventually I'll get an angle grinder and I'll chop them tails back a little bit but I'll leave it on there for now because um, I know butyl tape does sink down a little bit and I'll crank it up hard I'll give it a little while and then I'll crank it down again but to me that's job well done but if you can see anything I've done wrong or things I could do better in the future for the different deck fittings, then uh, please let us know in the, in the comments below. Right, I'm now going to move on to doing the, um, the vast amount of foam. So I'm going to clean this area out, get it all prepped, get my mixing area prepped, and um, get the heater on, and see how I go. Hi guys, I'm on a a bit of a strip at the minute. I was literally stripping fat off me because it is absolutely boiling in there now. So this is pumping out full heat. So that whole area is absolutely red as. Um, to try and 
prevent overspill and then to try and get it off the woodwork because it sticks like a sticky thing. I had to put a bit of black tape in that hole there for my first sort of um, tip that I go in there. Now let that go off and then we'll work out what we're going to do from there. So pretty much similar to what I've done before. I've marked them out this time so 250, 250, so one that goes into there that's going to come to about 500 so I should be able to give it a good stir without it sort of going over the sides and after watching the CFS video on using this stuff I mean the guys that so I've got this from CFS um, they oxygenated or aired the A as much air in it as possible then add the B, good stir um, obviously it kicks quick especially in this heat um, but yeah I need to put, put air into it basically without splashing it everywhere and plenty of bubbles in there let's do this I want to scrape out um, as much as possible to get that equal mix but at the same time, especially in this heat, you really haven't got long before it starts to go mental. So I want to stir it quickly, but I also want to get a consistent colour. Don't you tell me that it's stirred enough. Oh, I should be able to use this as a as a rough gauge of when it kicks. Um, so realistically, until that starts blowing up, there's not going to be a lot for me to film. So I'll turn my camera off for a moment. Uh, when I can see anything, or I can show you guys inside, or when it's getting close. I'll, uh, I'll tune back in but I'm going to give that a little while to kick so when this is going crazy and blowing up I'll know keep an eye on that give it 10-15 minutes plenty of heat on it and I'll, I can foresee it being at least another good um, two of the same even though this expands 25 times its size um, I think they're sort of in, in extremist conditions which I'm not quite achieving here but I'm getting as hot as I can but although I'm sort of blowing to make the woodwork warm it's not blowing warm air into that cavity um, I didn't think about putting this up there and blowing down into there but it's just this is far too much work so this is about as warm as we're going to get um, I don't think be able to see in here. Don't think I'll be able to see in there. No. Let me quickly try before I turn, turn my GoPro off. Let's check for foam on my hands. I'll get my phone out. There's a bit more of a directed torch. Not a particularly bright torch, but it's um more directional. Cool, yeah. Blimey. It's growing at a rate. I'm just going to take this off my head in case I'm not catching it. I'm hoping I can catch it on camera. That's blowing up a good one. Beautiful. Right, I'll turn this off for a minute and I'll, uh, all I'm going to do is another mix, maybe two mixes, exactly the same. Um, and then I'll show you the progress when it, when it starts getting close. Cheers. Ugh. Hey guys, excuse the, uh, the background noise, the, the blow is on. Just trying to get this to kick as, as much as possible. So I've done 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 500 mil pots. Um, and it's still, I don't think I'm gonna finish the job. I think it's gonna be a little bit more, which is a bit of a bugger. Um, but just put the last one in, the heat is on it now, letting it kick. So I took out with a wet foam, it was 32 kilos. Um, so one, two, three, the three and a half I've put in so far. I literally just put that last one in and yeah, it looks like she might come out the top. Obviously she's still growing at the minute. Um, hopefully it fills that void. But the end one down there, still got some to go. Um, which is only a small bit. But the guys I'll get my stuff from CFS. Uh, I don't have to buy that much. I don't know if I've mentioned it or not. I've finished them basically. Uh, so that one, I couldn't tell how much I paid for it. But they do a smaller one. So that's like a two and a half litre, and they do like a one litre one. So I'll probably just get that just to just to finish this job off. Um, yeah, bit of a bugger, but hey ho, I let that kick, and I want it. Once that's finished kicking, I'll uh, I'll tune back in. Cheers. Hi hey guys. So after the uh, the foam failure, I'm at a little bit of a loss at the minute. Um, what I've done. Is I've cut a bit, a bit late to show you really, but I've cut all the shelf pieces um, that will sit in here. Obviously, glued on the little blocks as guides. Um, I just want Sam. Um, obviously, this area here is going to be a big old cupboard, so I may put another shelf in. But I'm going to make these, stick them in, and um, we we'll work out exactly what's going to go in the back here, and then we'll take it from there. I've also made the uh, the rest of the bulkhead, I say I've made it, the old horrendousness that I pulled out and where there was bits broken off, bits cut out for where I was doing the rest of the bulkhead there. Um, I've done what I normally do, my bit of black um, carpet protector, just stuck it on, cut it out to create the shape. So now I can take that home onto a fresh bit of timber, cut it, glass it, um, and she's good to get screwed in and epoxied in. Uh, I think that's about it for now. So I need to get some timber and stuff to cut this out. Probably haven't got any at home. Um, do all the relevant stuff, get the foam to make them thing, get them laminated. Um, laminated like the fresh bit of wood that's going to go in here, which will be done at home. Um, and then hopefully tomorrow at some stage I'll get down here and stick in the shelves and if I get round to it stick the bit of timber in to get that done. Uh, I've got a race first thing in the morning, I think some race briefings at quarter to nine so I'll be here quite early. Um, so what I don't get done today is going to be a bit of a push getting it all done tomorrow before I have to go back to work in the evening. But I'll do what I can, I'll catch what I can, and um, hopefully I'll tune in tomorrow with a bit of progress. But cheers guys, thank you. Hey guys, so it's Sunday and uh, 1600 already. Um, it's been a bit of a failed day really. Um, I had a race this morning, took hours. It was great by the way. Uh, I'll get some footage on here um, if I can, I'll straight after this. Um, yeah, I had to go home. My bike ABS system was playing up when I come home Friday, so I had to fix that. I was taking the whole bike apart to get to little reservoirs on the BMW, which is a pain in the butt. But that's done now. So it's now 1600. What I have done is I've cut out the bulkhead. Um, and what I've done is because of the size of the opening white access, uh, I've had to do it in two pieces. So basically, the bulkhead is three pieces of wood. But you see the, the join there. Um, and where my offcuts of wood that I had back in the garage are minimal, and I didn't want to spend another £25 on a, a whole sheet. Okay. What I've done with the corner here where it's short, I've just marked out with my black tape so I can cut another piece there. I'll glue it on 
And like I've done here, what I'm going to do on this side, on the sorry, on the, the other side of here, it'll be in a lock foot, uh, the anchor locker. I'll uh, I'll laminate it, get it all nice, and then when she's in, she'll be filleted and it'll all glassed out. Same, this will be epoxy filleted and biaxial, just holding it all nice and tight. So she'll be nice and solid when she's in. Um, hopefully next week. I said I run out of the. Uh, I ran out of the foam last week, which is a bit of a last week yesterday, which is a bit of spanners to the plan. But I'll order some new foam to be here for next weekend. So I'll come down, finish filling in the foam, finish doing that sort of base bit, get that bulkhead epoxied in, and then I can start doing all the sort of finishing touches in there. Um, Kate actually come down with me. She's come down to help apparently. And uh, yep, there is. There is Kate helping me, sort of dead on the coach roof looking at the phone. Thanks for the help. But not a huge amount of progress this week, but um, it is what it is. What can I do with the materials of what I've got? Uh, I've set up now all that buy me a coffee and all that good stuff. So fancy buying me a coffee, always appreciated. Um, yeah, so have a good week guys, uh, please like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll uh, see you next week, thank you. And this is the moment the Spence realised it balls up. Who showed from the outside the state of this? It's when I come down earlier. The